those of you that are coming in, um, I'm about to say something. I'm getting ready to, um, I'm getting ready to say something. It's, um, it's really unfortunate that I even have to, I have to say this and that I have to even do this. Um, and I'm not going to be on here long. But it's it's just um, it's unfortunate that I have to say what I'm about to say. Um, hey to all of y'all coming in. I see you. Um, it's um, it's just unfortunate that I have to say this. I'm not going to spend a long time um, on this. But I just want to be clear. I want to be clear. And I hope everyone can hear me out. Um, and what I'm about to say on this, I've never, I've never done or said anything or done anything like what I'm about to do. In my life, never done this, never been in this, um, but there are moments when you have to say and you have to stand in your truth. As leaders and as being a bishop in the Lord's church, to many people around the world, um, some that um, in many arenas call me prophet and those that I pastor. And the church taught us over the years um, to be silent and hold our integrity. And there's nothing wrong with that. That silent means when you're silent, it means you're holding your integrity and you're holding your character. Um, and that is what many of us were taught. And I don't knock that. I still believe that to a degree. I'm, I'm, I'm taken back a little bit by what I just watched on YouTube. And some of you may have seen the show growing up gospel on uh, you may be watching it and then you may have seen Thursday that episode this past Thursday if you follow me and even if you don't but if you follow me you know I have been silent I have not said or disclosed or implied anything about being married to Tasha except last year when I did a statement and I only did that because um, she s said publicly that we were divorced and then I just simply came on to acknowledge the divorce and then to express that I was the one who filed for divorce. I didn't go into detail and I was made sure that I laced my words in a way that I did not bear the weight or try to um, uncover uh, my then wife. 
That's the only time I've mentioned her name on social media regarding this whole situation. And that was challenging to do. And I'm perplexed because I've watched something on YouTube that was sent to me a little while ago. And I won't go into detail today. I just came on here to say I've been silent. I, I think um, when you get to a place and I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. When you get to a place where you come to a consciousness that speaking does not damn you as a bishop or pastor. You maintain your integrity and your character in your speaking. But Ecclesiastes 3 and 7 says there's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. And I've tried to avoid bringing context to some of the things or the things that have been said the past two years about me to people privately and then going through public um, um, in the windows post um, that was put out in directs. Um, and I stayed silent. I never said to you what happened in my marriage. I never said it to social media. It took me a long time before I even expressed it to my bishop. He didn't know what was happening because I didn't want to uncover my then wife. But watching what I just seen on YouTube and we just talked um, on Saturday. Um, she FaceTimed me after the show. Well, it, was, it was about 950 and I didn't see it. And I FaceTimed her back on Saturday. We didn't yell. We were uh, talking and we laughed about a few things. But to then see what she just said, or not just said, I don't know when it was the other day, on YouTube, I'm confused. I'm not saying we best of buddies, but I thought there was a cordiality. Even though we don't talk uh, and it's very sporadic, I'm confused that how did we go from you FaceTiming me before the show even ended or right when it was ending to me FaceTiming you back Saturday and then all of these things are being said on YouTube. I am perplexed. I am, I'm perplexed. So there are two sides, maybe three, because there's the truth, but I don't know if that's really a side. There's my side and there's her side. Let me make this plain and I'm going to give you all some instructions. There's my side and then there's her side. And then there is the fullness of the truth of what happened. If I only tell her side, I haven't told the truth. If she only tells her side, she hasn't told the truth. Uh, my side, excuse me. She hasn't told the truth. The whole truth when you're telling is to tell not just your side or your someone else's side what they did. You got to fully, listen to me, fully tell your side without adding mechanics and without adding mesmerizing or without adjusting the narrative or flipping the narrative or creating an embellishment of movie theatrics for sympathetic acknowledgement. That's the truth. And then there is people's opinions. You all, I didn't make my life public with Tasha. 
She did that. And I stayed quiet for a long time until I did this statement. And I still didn't go in detail. I still covered my wife at the time because we'd been divorced now for quite some time. I covered her as a husband and then I covered her as her pastor at the time. I covered her as you should do as a spouse. Cover your spouse and deal privately. I covered her as a pastor. So there's two sides, three sides. If we had the truth, maybe four. Her side, my side, and then you all's opinions and your perspective. No matter what she says, there are people that are going to agree with her and side with her. There are people who won't side with her. No matter what I say, there are people who will side with me and there are people who will not side with me. No matter what she says, there are people that will believe her and there are people who won't believe her and vice versa with me. I'm intelligent enough. I'm an educated man to know that. And I'm just perplexed. Um, so I had ended my relationship dialogue with my podcast. I started last month, four weeks, the dialogue show. And we, we talked about relationship. And even in that, I still threw myself under the bus in that anyone that watched it would tell you. I threw myself, go back and watch it on Facebook for Ron House. And I didn't want to get into relationship this month. Tomorrow, I'm going to add context to this thing. I'm going to add context. And it's unfortunate that things are this public. But I can't allow myself, because I've been quiet, and many people still have challenged my integrity and my character because she's been the one speaking and her story sounds believable. And it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Some things Tasha did tell the truth in, in that clip I saw, very few, but the rest is adjusted narrative. She taught me, I told her this Saturday, you taught me, Tasha. She always said this and I believe it. She's good at it. Not in a negative way or sarcasm to control your narrative, control your story. Secondly, she always said and taught me, stand in your truth. I learned those two things more so from her than anybody in my life. And so tomorrow I'm going to add context with integrity, not bashing, because I'm not going to do that. I'm going to share my part. Because what I'm not going to do is just share her part. I'm going to share my part. And then I'm going to share why I filed for divorce. I'm going to bring context because it's, it's not just about having an affair, quote unquote, or cheating. There is a differential area there because I'm big on words. And if you study it, you'll find the difference between affair and cheating. It's not right whether I do it, you do it, whoever do it. If you're married, it's wrong, period. And you have to be accountable to it. And if you make excuses for what you've done, then you must question the sincere purity of your apology. And if I do that, I have to stand there as well. So tomorrow at 8.15 p.m. on Veron House, Facebook, V-E-R-O-N House, the dialogue show, I'm going to add context. I'm going to create a picture that is not a fake picture without giving you a whole history, but I've been silent, you all. Um, I've been silent. I've held my peace. And the Lord spoke to me last year and said to me while I was crying, while everything was being said about me and people was formulating their opinions. I never told you to be silent. You were silent because you chose. Now, the only way I will not do or say anything on a dialogue is if the father speaks to me and I'm very good at hearing him. I've been preaching 31 years and I know his voice. Anyone that's been in the service with me know the prophetic on my life. And so I know his voice. 
And if a father speaks to me and says, do not, I'm still going to have my dialogue, but I won't have it on that issue, on this issue rather. But if a father speaks to me and says to me, be quiet or don't say anything or let it go, I will obey the father. Um, any bishops trying to call me with all respect, I need to hear from the father. Um, it's just unfortunate. I'm Pray for me as I pray for you. And I'm going to continue to pray or I've prayed for Tasha. And that's not a sarcastic, I've done that. I, and I mean that. I wished her the best. And I wish her the best of success. And I mean just that. With my heart. If I wished her evil. Or I was out to see her fall. Or I was, or let me rephrase it. I was out to attack her character. Or put blemishes on Tasha's name. I would have said what I could say and I would have shown way long time ago what I could have shown. I could have shared the receipts. I could have put up a lot of stuff and sent a lot of stuff to a lot of people. But I did not So that's all I wanted to say on Facebook. I'm going to go on Instagram. I'm going to go on Facebook for this short while and say, um, and I know someone's trying to call me now and I'm going to say this with all due respect Bishop I won't name you but you should have called me a year and a half ago because calling me now is not really the right thing to do I haven't heard from you in a year and a half Bishop and you're probably calling me to tell me to end the live I'm going to end it but I haven't heard from you I didn't hear from you when uh, people were saying what they were saying. I didn't hear from you when Tasha did her lives in the morning and put up posts. I didn't hear from you when a certain blogger. I didn't hear from you, Bishop, with all due respect. But So don't call me now because we're not friends because a friend would have called me then when I was at the lowest part, one of the lowest parts of my life. I'm fine now. So, And that's no disrespect. I didn't call your name. So if you feel offended, it's be only because you choose to. But it is the truth. I didn't hear from you, Bishop. So um, don't you can't call me now. You ain't called me before. You didn't call me because some of you were in the comments on her page uh, saying you're praying for her. But you didn't come in my comments for me and say you're praying for me. And so you can't call me now because I, I, I screenshot some of your comments of you leaders and pastors and people. Who are saying you're praying for her and didn't even know the story. You didn't ask me my side. But so you can't call me now. I can't hear you. Uh, I'm like God. My ear isn't inclined to you. It's closed to you with all due respect. All right. So join me tomorrow again. If the Lord tell me not to, then I will. Uh, thank you for all of you that uh, came in. I'm sure somewhere along the line. It's just unfortunate because we just talked Saturday. Again, I told you she FaceTimed me after the show Thursday and then I FaceTimed her back because I I didn't, uh, was that Friday? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, Friday. Uh, and, uh, because I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I didn't see it. I did not, I didn't see the, uh, the, uh, the FaceTime and I did call her back and we don't talk like that, but I did love you too, Benjamin, but I did call her back and we laughed, uh, and, and we hadn't talked in a long time and we laughed, whatever. And so now I see this YouTube with her and the producer, executive producer of the show. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, what in the, um, but I, I should be used to that. And uh, I am, but I'm just shocked. All right. Thank y'all so much. I'm going over to Facebook. I'm going to ba basically say the same thing. I may say a little differently, um, but it's basically the same thing. And um, uh, that is where it's at. But please remember, don't, think that bishops and pastors and people should always be silent unfortunately or fortunate or unfortunate however you want to see because we can agree to disagree social media is, is the place before we were standing up in our pulpits but now social media travels faster uh, and I wouldn't say this in a pulpit because that's a sacred place so I'm not going to put this in a pulpit this is a, that's a sacred place this should be done outside of a sacred place of what I'm saying because that's our sacred holy place and we must keep it holy. Um, so this is where 
uh, we are. But don't think because someone's a bishop they have to be quiet. Because I was quiet and people saying it must be true what she's saying for over a year and a half, two years because I was quiet. I kept preaching, I kept traveling, I kept building, uh, focus on my businesses and all of those things. I, uh, I let people say I was broke and all those uh, those things because of what she implied. And, uh, and I let it be what it was. And I stayed quiet and kept God and I prayed for her. I had the whole church to pray for her. They, if they get on here, some of them on here, I told the whole church to pray for her. I said, don't speak ill of her. I said, keep buying her music. What happened between us shouldn't stop you from buying our music because that's between us. That's what I said. I said it to the whole church. I said it. I told my leaders, any of you, if you're friends of hers, you keep being friends if you choose to. Just don't relish in what our private business. I did that. Thank you, Marcus. I did. I told the her church plenty of times, keep buying the music. Buy it when it come out. Buy it all the way out. Support her. I said, she is still in my top five best singers. I still consider Tasha my, one of my top five best singers. I, I, yes, I still listen to her music because that's who I am. And that don't make me perfect. But it's just who I am. And a lot of bishops that I know, and I'm about to cry, and pastors have drunken themselves into alcohol and cocaine because the church told them to be silent. I know pastors who have walked away from ministry and two pastor friends of mine committed suicide. I won't name their name because one you know committed suicide because the bishops told him to be quiet and he couldn't take it. That wasn't God. The bishops and they only did what they felt was best. So I'm not knocking them. Pastors are hurting because the church keeps telling them to be quiet. I'm telling you, I talk to pastors all the time. Bishops, people, you know. People you watch. On TV, on social media, their wives and their they, because they've been silent and they're dying. They have suicidal preaching to y'all. Praying and prophesying, but because they say, if you say something, they're going to get you. Their integrity is going to be gone. You're in character. These men and women of God are hurting. And some of this ain't God told them to be quiet. It's people. And quiet doesn't mean you please God. No more than speaking a truth means God is upset. Once you speak your truth and you come on this social media, and I've said this and I still believe it. You leave it open for public because once you become public, people can then go and do blogs and say things. But if you're going to say my name, say the truth and you can't say it because you don't know it. If you're going to say my name, don't say allegedly, say my name and say it right. Say you don't know. And that's all I have to say. All right. Go on to Facebook. Listen, even if I don't know you, I love you. And I mean that I love everybody. I love my enemies because one of my enemies is on here right now. But he called me to say sorry the other day. And I ain't going to call his name because I ain't know your business. But guess what? I love you, man. And the past is over. OK, I love my enemies. I still let him come preach at my church twice, knowing what he did and said about me and made sure I blessed him more than he ever got blessed in the 20 plus years of his ministry, because that's who I am. And thank God. He. Finally, apologize. I wasn't looking for the words because sometimes apology is not sorry. Sometimes people just start talking and that's their apology. All right. Love y'all. Shalom. Now I got to see how to end it.